Dying Light 2, Stay Human shares the same traits so far. With Techland committing to at least 5 years of content and support, this is an exciting time to be a fan of the series. Without further delay, let's talk about this ambitious sequel and if it's worth your investment. Like its predecessor, Dying Light 2 boasts an enormous open world, impressive and polished combat, sleek parkour traversal mechanics which to me stands out as my favorite feature. and a ton of new components that I think can easily give you hundreds of hours, as advertised. For starters, let's speak to some of these for newcomers to the series. Dying Light is a hybrid action-adventure title with mechanics that feel inspired by a number of games from a variety of genres. To me, EA and DICE's Mirror's Edge is at the forefront of the mechanics as you traverse the world in first person at a fast pace including climbing and jumping from building to building, which also may feel familiar to fans of Assassin's Creed. The most important aspect here though is that this is a zombie survival game through and through, and shares traits with games like Dead Rising and Dead Island. With the sequel, there are a lot of story-focused details I won't speak to or spoil but it's important to know how important they are to the mechanics of the game. As the name suggests, Stay Human, can play to the words in meaningful ways. One of the game's core mechanics also making a return is the day and night cycle. The best part here is how it plays into your gaming experience in a whole new way, which brings out one of the best parts of the sequel. In the original, you didn't want to be caught outside at night due to the crazy, difficult zombies you would meet. I found myself jumping out of my seat with anxiety when the sun came down, and this time around it's for a completely different reason, but it's still just as intense. The parkour system really is the highlight of Dying Light 2, and carried the game across the finish line, I can't stress that enough. If the narrative is on a downbeat, a bug pops up, or a mission is too generic, my blank stare is replaced with a smile right after doing a bit of platforming. The way everything flows, and how the parkour upgrades slot into one another, is a treat. Successfully running and chaining together spots feels like the best moments of a Tony Hawk game, especially when you're creating, lines, in the moment as you're moving. It's all facilitated through leveling up, which follows the, you gain experience when you actually do something, design philosophy. Big fan. Having two trees branching off of combat and parkour keeps things wonderfully simple, which are communicated with on-screen, you got this much XP prompts. Both work in tandem with one another and open up combo actions, which are some of the strongest parts of the game. The ability to repost a melee attack, then jump on someone's head, then do a 360 degree windmill turn off of a roof and grab an open window ledge is silly, in a real good way. Movement gets cleaner and crazier the more you play too, including wall running shenanigans. We need more games that riff on Mirror's Edge, and I'll take it where I can get it. The gamification of these skills works to its benefit, especially when they come out naturally during some intense chases, because it's easy for Dying Light 2 to take itself way too seriously. Picturesque areas, set to the backdrop of trees and mountains, are stunning on a current generation machine. Performance was not an issue for me on PS5, and as cliche as it sounds, I stopped to admire the scenery several times in Dying Light 2, especially in the opening hour before you get to the city. The day and night cycle, which impacts how zombies and the player character interact, is smart, and done better than many other games that waste it. Dying Light 2 has a lot of loot, from crafting materials to temporary buffs. Lucky players will find a high-level weapon with a ton of mod potential and this is where the true dopamine hit lies. Finding a nasty new melee weapon and trying it out on zombies is the key gameplay loop that I just couldn't stop chasing. However, the sheer number of zombies that are lootable but then end up, empty, is maddening. Why make bodies lootable if they have no loot? On a more positive note, the nighttime expeditions also make a return, as do the buffed rewards given to those braving the night and its unique, highly lethal volatile monsters. This time around, however, playing during the night is now not as optional. There are nighttime missions that players will need to get through if they hope to get some unique rewards and progress side mission content. I personally love this, as nighttime turns everything up to 11, with combat made much more intense and chase sequences being outright terrifying. I did everything I could at night, as that extra layer helped rescue the otherwise uninspired mission design. Altogether, Dying Light 2 is a constantly fluctuating experience, due in part to the game's lackluster story and eventually stale combat, as well as a good number of bugs. At multiple points during my time with Dying Light 2, I had to completely restart the game because of a glitch that would prevent NPCs from speaking to me at all. 
I also came across issues where Aiden would grab onto nothing at all, enemies would freeze in place, and zombies wouldn't attack me. By far the worst bug was when I would become softdocked, although it should be patched by the time the game launches. All the same, these issues took even more away from the entire experience, leaving a layer of frustration behind. Paired with a lackluster story filled with misleading choices and unbearable characters, Dying Light 2 is carried by its world and combat, but even then, both eventually get stale. Toward the end of the game, I didn't feel like I had to unlock any more territories for either faction, and combat had become repetitive. 